Okay, guys, I've got up Joe Biden's chart here. Now, I can't vouch for the validity of that particular ascendant at two, well, three degrees of Sagittarius, but it is rather interesting. So you'll see that his chart ruler, Jupiter, is in the eighth house, which is very significant. He has all these Scorpio planets, that's Mars, Mercury, Sun, and Venus, all in Scorpio in the twelfth house. And he has Saturn in Gemini in the seventh house, all things I'll be looking at. He's got Neptune there in the tenth, which is quite common for politicians because politicians need us to buy into an image or a dream of them. And as George Galloway would say, politics is show business for ugly people and Neptune's all about show business and politics is increasingly about a show. Nothing about it is real. It's a mirage. Increasingly, I've realized, doesn't matter who you who you vote for, it's all just a show to give the impression that there's some sort of democratic process and that we actually having a say when it's become clear that, that we certainly not. So anyway, I'm, I'm interested in the 12th house planets and his ruling planet in eighth because he has had a fair amount of tragedy in his life. So his first wife um, was involved in a car crash. The, uh, she was on her way to do Christmas shopping with their three young children at the time, two boys and the youngest was a girl, Naomi. And uh, she was hit by a truck. Unfortunately, she was killed and so was the little daughter. Bo, his eldest son, survived, although Bo did pass about two years ago, so it's another loss in the family. And Hunter obviously survived, we all know about Hunter, and he had head injuries. So, you know, I mean, this is just, that's not nice stuff for anyone, really. So, you know, you can see here the, the kind of trauma, tragedy. He, he's been no um, stranger to dramatic, life-changing, extremely challenging events. So that's the themes of Scorpio and the, 11th, the eighth house, of course. So what about, um, uh, yes, the, the aneurysms. Now, in 1988, which was the time when, when Pluto was in Scorpio over here, and it was conjuncting his Mars, that was when he had two aneurysms in his brain. He first had the right side done and then he had the left side done. What did, happened with these aneurysms is there were arteries that had very weak walls and they could have ruptured. So an incision was made into his skull and clips were inserted to secure up the arteries. Sorry if that's too much medical information for those of you who don't like that. It's quite enough for me as well actually. I don't like it. So that was extremely serious. Now, when you read on his Wikipedia page, they don't even mention it. And when you read articles from the New York Times at the time, the old articles, they kind of downplay it like it was nothing. Although I've actually heard a clip where he's talking and he says, oh, I, I said to the doctor, um, what are my chances? And the doctor said, you mean of oh, fatality or morbidity? And he said, I mean, what are my chances of getting off that table alive? And the doctor said, well, your chances of living are much higher. So that's exactly how he recounts the conversation. So it seems from that conversation, the doctors weren't hopeful that he would get off the table. He might live, but he wouldn't really live in a particularly compassmented state. Although we know he has, he's continued to have a political career. Although the reason for looking at his chart was wondering how long he's going to hang in here this year. So. We should uh, possibly just have a quick glimpse at his, some of his, his past, which I find rather interesting. His name's Joseph Robinette Biden, and he was born November 20, oh, Scorpio, as we say, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, to a Catholic family. Now, it says here his father had been wealthy, but he had a lot of financial setbacks around the time Biden was born. Now, we see that Biden has got his moon in Taurus, which does indicate a wealthy family. Look, Moon in Taurus, it indicates a kind of wealthy background. So I wonder that even though his father had hard times, if there was some sort of wealthy influence in some family member that helped him along the way, because in America, you're really going to get this far in politics without some sort of wealth behind you. So it says his father had to kind of go on to become a used car salesman, but he did actually become very successful and they had a middle class kind of upbringing. Interestingly, it goes on to talk about he went to school, Archmere Academy in Claymont. He was a standout halfback in baseball. And he uh, was that, yeah, he played baseball and the halfback was in American football, I think. Sorry. And it says here, though a poor student, he was class president, right? So he was a poor student. However, that doesn't stop him going on to university. He 
did he maybe go on a kind of sports scholarship thing? Because if you're such a poor student, you don't usually go on to study at university. I don't know. Maybe. So it says he was an unexceptional student, but he did earn a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1965 with a double major in history and political science and a minor in English. He had a stutter, but that improved since his early 20s, right? Okay, so it also goes on to say, when it talks here about his legal career, that he uh, earned um, a Juris Doctor from Syracuse University College of Law and he was admitted to the Delaware Bar. It also mentions somewhere here, sorry, it, it's come out so bleeding small, but it, men it mentions somewhere here that he was kind of 75 out of 80 something students. So he was way down again. So again, an academic underperformer. Although from this, you can see he's the kind of high school ball playing guy. He's a bit sporty. Team's popular if he was made class president. So the theme is that he wasn't particularly um, academically proficient in any way but he's popular like there you go sun conjunct venus in scorpio he's got a certain charm and must have been fairly charismatic as a young person although i kind of find that hard to see now but definitely you can see there there is a kind of magnetism to his personality and look sagittarius rising he's sporty he enjoys the outdoors enjoys a bit enjoys, enjoys a bit of ball so he's got kind of athleticness to him and with mars in scorpio is a very determined person so for all his lack of having much ability mentally he certainly had a lot of a uh, lot of kind of determination and drive but i do feel that looking here in his eighth house and seeing jupiter that's a benefactor and Pluto, which I recall, I think Hillary also had Pluto in her eighth, and I know Nigel Farage had a very strong eighth house. So that seems to indicate the eighth house is other people's money. So I'm thinking here this means some sort of influential backer. Maybe he was involved with the Masons. Maybe his father was involved with the Freemasons. I'm definitely getting the strong hint of someone in the background encouraging him, making him sure he got his start in the legal profession as a prosecutor. And then, as we know, from 47 years, He's been in politics, right? So he was sort of groomed to have a political role. And despite being far less talented and charismatic as the Bill Clintons and the Biden and the, and the Obamas of the world, after three attempts, he's president. He was in trouble at college for plagiarizing. And later in life, in his political life, when he was running for president the first time, he plagiarized a Michael Foote, Michael Foote of the Labour Party in the UK, a Michael Foot speech like verbatim and was caught out on that and was a bit embarrassing and he was in trouble during his first run for president for lying about his academic background so this has been a thorn in his side that academic background like I see even like you know you've got the Bushes who seemed Bush young Bush came across as a bit of a dope occasionally but he'd been to Yale he had his pilot's license spoke Spanish his father had quite a distinguished career in the CIA and whatever. So all the other American presidents have been fairly hard hitting. You know, they had kind of displayed a lot more ability and academic ability. Bill Clinton being a Rhodes Scholar. It seems this is Biden's an awfully unusual choice for, for president, given all this. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, come on, the Democrat have got a lot of more highly qualified people, but he's obviously meant to be there for a reason, a short reason. Right now, I think it's Pelosi that's calling all the shots. So let's just jump ahead here and have a look. Remember, last time Mars was triggered was when he was having his brain aneurysm fixed and was facing a life and death struggle because the prognosis from the doctor was not good. But in typical Scorpio fashion, he did pull through with flying colors, despite what he was told. Look at July, the ephemeris for 2001. We've got Mars 12 degrees Leo. So it's squaring his Mars here in Scorpio in the 12th, ruling the 5th. Here we've got Saturn, 12 degrees of Aquarius, right? So also from here, squaring that Mars. We've got Uranus, 13 degrees of Taurus. And once again, it's opposing Mars in the 12th house. And uh, Neptune and Jupiter is con uh, Pluto is conjunct his Jupiter ruling the ascendant in the eighth the house of of demise or so I'm just wondering and thinking we should really look closely at this early July period to see if that's not the period where there's some event whereby he's sidelined for Kamala although I still think it's going to be Pelosi who's actually running things so we've got this Jupiter 
ruling the ascendant Pluto, the planet of major change, especially as Jupiter is in the eighth house. It's a very strong planet here, indicating some sort of, um, maybe not sudden or surprising, but some sort of dramatic turnabout of events. I think that's probably going to be the time, if any, that we see the end of Joe Biden. So I'm sure we will return to this chart and to this subject. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.